Uh, this is lecture 48, the moving coordinate axes. Uh, it looks like it says axes, but it's supposed to be read axes. I'm not sure if the spelling's right, but the moving coordinate axes. So, so far, we already know the world line for a moving axis. Let me just remind you what we're talking about here. First, we're talking about a train and a platform, right? And we'll have some origin O. We can line it up at t equals zero. We'll call this the x prime. We'll call this the x, okay? Oftentimes, it's written with a kind of a script O prime for the moving uh, coordinate frame. And then just O for the... Uh, Stationary coordinate frame. Um, now remember, at each point along the, both the platform and on the train, and you can imagine it's an infinitely long train if you want, uh, there are rulers laid out, measuring rods, if you will. And at each point, there's also a clock. Okay, and you can imagine that there are people that are standing at each of those points who are able to record events that they saw at their position. Okay, so we already know. Let me just. I'm going to draw another train here. We'll talk about the origin. So that's x prime equals zero. X prime equals zero. And we have our observer, you know, with his clock head standing there. And we've talked before about the idea that if this is the t-axis and this is the x-axis. That's this is the, the coordinate system for the platform, right? It's not moving. But the train is moving relative to us. The train is moving relative to us with some velocity v. Right? So as time goes on, now when we agreed, of course, to synchronize our watches when our origins overlapped, right? So when x prime and x are both equal to zero, we say we start our watches now, it's 12 o'clock, it's zero o'clock, whatever time we're going to call our starting point, our t naught, if you will. And if we monitor the position of the origin on the train as time goes forward, so after some time t, Right, say this time here, it has traveled some distance, and so it's going to be located at v times t, right? So I'll put that point, maybe I'll put it like here. Let's, there we go. So at this time t, it's traveled some distance x, and we could, of course, done that many, many times, and if it's moving at a uniform velocity, then we'll have a straight line. And we called it the world line. I don't know if I'm going to hit my point. I don't think so. So I'll move my point. There we go. Actually, I'll erase my point. This is T prime. That is the world line of the origin, right? Yep. And so at some other moment between, some moment in time between zero and this time here, maybe here, as time is going forward, basically, this guy that I've drawn is moving along this line, just like this, you see? And so we want to construct his x-axis, right? So if we think about the guy on the platform standing at the origin, as time goes forward, he just does this, right? His motion is directly up. Always at x equals zero, right? So that means that this line that I've drawn, t prime, this means that x prime is equal zero all along here, correct? Yeah. And the relationship between the velocity of the train and the, any point along this t prime axis is such that x is equal to v times t. That's how we got that world line, right? So if I know the velocity, the uniform velocity, or the relative velocity, multiply that by some value of t here, that tells me where on x this is. So this is, it's kind of a backwards equation if you think about it. You're, you're, you wanted to say, well, why wouldn't we write t equals, you know, x over v? Well, you could have written that, I suppose, but this is a more standard way to do it, and it's easier to think about it. So now I want to consider this guy. He is located at x prime equals 1, okay? Here he is. He too has a clock head, all right? And for now, I'm going to assume that all of the clocks on the train are synchronized with each other, and all of the clocks on the platform are synchronized with each other, and we'll talk in a moment about how that's accomplished, okay? So what do I draw for him? He would have a world line too, right? Yes. And at t equals zero, this line must be somewhere over here, right? And it's going to be parallel to this line. It's going to look like this. I'm doing my best to make this line look parallel to this line. This is the, the time axis for the guy standing x prime equals 1. But I'm not going to write you know, t prime again. We already have that drawn here. What I will write, though, is that x prime 
along this line is equal to 1. Okay? Okay. Now, I said that I'm, I'm, I'm going to treat the speed of light as a value which is always equal to 1. It just makes the algebra a little easier to work with. So C is always equal to 1, which means that light lines will always be at 45 degrees. Uh, and for the consequence of that, I can write that X is equal to VT plus 1 at this location. Okay? Okay. I didn't leave myself enough room in my drawing for the next person that I'm going to put on this train. Let me move the wheels a little bit. So I'm going to draw another observer on here. This time, he is located at x prime equals 2. And that line, which is also going to be parallel to these lines, will be given by x prime equals 2 all along this line, or x equals vt plus 2. So I said that their clocks are synchronized. How exactly do we do that? Here's the way we're going to do it. We're going to have the person at x prime equals 1, that's this fellow right here, yeah. is going to be given the instructions that when you receive a light signal from me and from your neighbor over here, so x prime equals 2 and x equals 0, you're going to send out a little signal, and as soon as the guy in the middle receives the signal, the guy at x prime equals 1, he's going to start his clock, and he knows that they're going to send out the signal at t prime equals 0. That's their goal, okay? Okay. And he knows since he's located one unit away and the speed of light is one, that he should have his clock set at t equals one and he's ready to start ticking as soon as he gets that light signal. So you can see what this is, is that this is that it's a synchronization principle built around Einstein's idea about simultaneity. X prime equals one is equal distance from x prime equals zero and x prime equals two. They're both going to send out a light signal, okay? Okay. And so that means that if they are sent at the same time, that is, if x prime equals 0 and x prime equals 2 are synchronized, then he will receive those signals at the same time. We're going to assume that if he doesn't, he says, hey, you know, I got uh, the signal from x prime equals 0 a little bit before x prime equals 2, and so that we could play around with this until we get them at the same time. You see? Yeah. That's the principle behind it, though. Okay? So let's assume that it's going to work out perfectly. Now, if I'm in the train frame, I'm not going to draw this world line for myself because I'm not moving, right? Yeah. I'm always at the origin, I'm not moving. I'm going to see a frame like X and T have over here, right? Yeah. So here's what my frame looks like on the train. I'm not worried about the platform, so I'm not going to put anything into the platform, but here I have X prime axis and here's my T prime axis. It's just a regular old Cartesian coordinate system just like the platform used. There's no reason not to. This is the origin, of course. This will be, I'm going to draw this a little bit bigger. This will be x equals 1, or x prime equals 1, and this will be x prime equals 2. You see that? Yes. If I wanted to draw the world line for x prime equals 1, it's just going to be a line going straight up like this, just like the t prime axis is the world line of the observer at the origin, just going straight up in time. As time goes forward, he's just standing there, not changing his x position at all, right? Yes. The same thing for the guy at x prime equals 2. His world line will just be a vertical line, just as before. And so this is the line x prime equals 0, x prime equals 1, x prime equals 2. Yes? Yes. Now, let's draw the, the light signals that he is going to receive. And I'm going to mark off important events that we'll need. So first let's start with the light wave that is sent from the origin, O. I'm going to call the origin O. I'll label it O on here as well. Then, well, this is really the event I'm labeling, so I guess I should have. The event O is when the, guy, uh, the origin observer sends out his light signal at t equals zero. It's, since light travels at, uh, speed of light is one, we will have a 45 degree, and my, sometimes it tends to get curvy looking, and I don't intend it to be curvy. And we'll arrive at x prime equals one right there, okay? Okay. Observer at x prime equals two will send out a light signal as well. And because these, the distance between these two is the same, it's going to take exactly the same amount of time. It'll have the same slope but in the opposite direction, right? So this light line will look like this. I'm going to let this signal, unfortunately it's going to hit in a place that I didn't want, 
travel on up to the T prime axis here. Okay? And I'm going to call this event, this event where x prime equals 2 sends his light signal out, we're going to call event A. Where x prime equals 0 sends out his light signal, we're going to call that event O. When x prime equals 1 receives both of those signals, you see it's at the same time, we're going to call that event B. And when the observer sees the reflection of his light signal arriving back at him, or you can think of it as the signal from 2, right, yeah. arriving at him. We're going to call that event C, okay? Let's look at something about these lines that we've drawn here. Do you see the triangles that are present there? Yes. And you can see the angles as well in the line segment. So what do we know about this? We know that the line segment OB is congruent to AB, which is also congruent to BC, right? Yeah, BC. Another way of saying that is the lengths of OB is equal to the length of AB is equal to the lengths of BC. Is that clear to everyone? Mm -hmm. Let me think about it. Well, the distance from the origin to x prime equals 1 is 1. Yeah. The distance from 1 to x prime equals 1 to x prime equals 2 is also 1. Yes. Okay. The speed of light in all directions is equal to 1. Yes. Okay, so the, you can imagine the time it takes light to travel from here to here, which is a distance of 1, is the same as the time it takes for light to travel from here to here, which is also a distance of 1. And the length of this line is that distance, you see? Yeah. Well, kind of. That's the origin of it, though, okay? And this line segment BC here, you can think of that if this was a signal sent from x prime equals 1, back to x prime equals 0, you can see that BC should be equal to OB, right? Because it's the same distance. It's traveling, the light is traveling the same distance. Right? It's going from 0 to 1 and from 1 to 0. Obviously, that's the same. Yeah. The distance AB is the same as those two because the distance from here to here is the same. You see? Yes. So you can think of it like a mirror if you want. Right? There's a symmetry there. So what we want to do now is take this and try to put it on here, okay? Okay. So the first thing we know is that the, 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 the observer at the origin is sending out a light signal. And the speed of light is 1 here, and it's going to be 1 here as well, which means I can draw a 45-degree light line just like I did here. And it should arrive onto the x prime equals 1 world line at some point, and we'll call that arrival the event B. So all I have to do is make a 45 degree light line. Let me uh, move this decoration out of the way. There's a note up here, this is x prime equals 1. So this is event B, right? This is event O. We've got that done, right? Yeah. Now how do we get event A? Well, event A occurs at x prime equals 2. We know that all along this world line, x prime is equal to 2, yes? Yes. And we know that the speed of light is still going to be what? But we know it's coming from here, right? So we don't know where it starts, but we know where it ends. So all we have to do is draw a 45 degree line going backwards in time, right? We're just going to run backwards in time and see where it came from, right? So we do this. I'm going to do my best at making a 45 degree line. And this must be the location of event A. So I'll write an A above that. The x, so this, of course, occurred x prime equals 2. But because these two the observer at the, at the origin and the observer at x prime equals 2 sent those signals out at t prime equals 0. It means that I can draw a line. That line is t prime equals 0. Everywhere along that line, t prime is equal to 0. In this graph, which represents just the train frame, in the way that we know how to do it, we don't have to think too much about it, right? Our x-axis, or our, excuse me, our x prime axis, that's also, we could have said, that's the, that's the line along which t prime is equal to 0, isn't it? Yes. So this is our x prime axis. Okay? Okay. Now we want to get a formula for it. Like here we have this, this formula that said x equals v times t, right? Yeah. I'd like to get a way, I'd like to get an equation like this for this x prime axis. And you'll notice this light line here, right? There's an angle. It's this, should be a similar, and it's the same kind of angle that we see here, right? They're not the same numbers, but right, don't worry about that. We'll just worry about this. I'm going to call this angle alpha and this angle beta. 
and I'm going to call this angle here alpha with a bar over it. I'm going to call this angle here beta with a bar over it, okay? Alright. And we know that this line, this light line, right, subtends 45 degrees, right? Yeah. So that means that alpha plus alpha bar is 45 degrees. From this argument over here, we, we knew about the, the congruence of these line segments. We also know that that makes the triangles uh, O, B, C is similar to the triangle O, B, A. And that's true here as well. Here's my T prime axis, and here is event C. Okay, so O, B, C and O, B, A are also similar triangles. What do we know about similar triangles? Well, we know that alpha then is going to be equal to beta. So if alpha is equal to beta, right? Yeah. Then that, and we know that alpha plus alpha bar is equal to 45 degrees, then that tells me that this angle alpha bar is equal to 45 degrees minus alpha. The tangent of alpha bar, that's this angle down here, right? Well, actually, let me write what the tangent of beta is first. The tangent of beta with the bar over it, so this angle here, right, is going to be equal to, well, the, so we look at this angle and imagine a right triangle constructed from it, right? We've got a distance VT, and I, I have these different colored pens, maybe I should use them from time to time. We have VT over T. So the tangent of beta will be VT over T, which just equals V. You see that? Yeah. So the velocity is equal to the tangent of this angle. Now because OBC and OBA are similar, that means that the tangent of alpha bar will be equal to the tangent of beta bar. We know that tangent of beta bar is just equal to V. What about the tangent of alpha bar? Well here we have to look at this and let's just pick some point right along here and imagine, well what is this distance here? Well this distance is T, right? And what is this distance here? And this is the distance x, right? Yeah. So the tangent of alpha bar is equal to t over, that's the opposite over the adjacent is x. You see this? Mm -hmm. Which means that now we have an equation that we can solve here. v equals t over x. Or, I guess the way we really want to write it, remember before we wrote x equals vt? Yeah. And that's the equation for the t prime axis. The equation for the x prime axis is x equals vt. I'm going to put a box around that. x equals vt, and that's our x prime axis. Our t prime axis, we already had that, and that was that t is equal to vx. So our x prime axis is x equals vt, and our t prime axis is given by the equation t equals vx. These are not prime coordinates, right? This is all, t is in the, the platform frame, and x is in the platform frame. Yeah. It tells me how to draw this line, t prime, in the coordinate system for the, the platform frame, okay? okay? X prime, that axis, is given by x equals vt. Do you see the symmetry? Mm. t equals vx, x equals vt. I believe so, yeah. Right? Let me write them right above, right next to each other, and then you'll see it, right? So I have t equals vx, and x equals vt. Yes, I see. Right? So time and space kind of are interchangeable here. This is because c is equal to 1, okay? We would be doing things a little bit differently. This would be our, I think we call this probably our T over C axis. Okay? But, uh, you know, we don't want to mess with that. It's much easier, I think, if you set C equals to 1, and then you can get these nice symmetrical relations like the X prime axis is given by X equals VT, and the T prime axis is given by T equals VX. Okay? Okay. So this symmetry will be important. And how did we come up with that? I know now it looks a little confusing. There's a lot of stuff drawn up here. It's because of the similarities of these triangles. Okay? And the fact that light always makes this angle 45 degrees, both in this reference frame and in this moving reference frame. And because of the similar triangle nature of it, we can glean something about this angle that the x prime axis makes to the x axis, which I call alpha bar, and its relationship, which is identical, it's equal to the same angle, beta bar, which is the angle that the t prime axis makes, it, makes with t. So there's a symmetry there, right? Yeah. And if you think about it, we've got to get the speed of light to be the same equal to 1, and the way that that's going to happen is if we bend the t prime axis over as we must, right, is to bend the x axis up, or x prime axis up, uh, the same, right? When we did Galilean relativity, uh, we didn't worry about it. 
we had a bent T prime axis, but it didn't matter because time was always just you know a line that went across here. But our x prime axis was perfectly lined up with our x axis as we went along, right? Yeah. To correct for that, we have to bend that x that x prime axis up. It kind of makes a V. Let me erase all of this. Now it's a shame. Let me just draw uh, the the coordinate system without all the details here. This is the geometrical proof. I, I think that I will probably turn the algebraic demonstration of this into an exercise. It would make a nice homework assignment where you walk through each of the steps. Yeah. It's, you construct these same points, A, B, and C, and algebraically you figure out what these coordinates are. And then we can, we can get something algebraically out of it. Namely, the equation for the x prime axis. So, if we're going to do a relativity problem, here's how we do it. We start with the regular old coordinate system, okay? T, x. Next, draw a light line coming from the origin, right? So that's a line that makes a 45 degree angle to both the x and t axes, all right? Yeah. Now construct the world line of the origin of the moving frame. We're assuming that they, they synchronize their clocks at x equals t, x equals x prime equals zero uh, at the origin, right? So that line, is going to look like this. The faster you're going, it should be straight, and I'm sure it's curvy. The steeper the slope on this, the closer it is to the dotted line, the faster it's going, right? If, if this were just right up against the dotted line, you'd be traveling really close to the speed of light, okay? And so this is the T prime axis, okay? Uh, the tangent of this angle here is the velocity, right? But I'm not going to write those details in because I, I just want to look at the graph. The x prime axis makes the same angle to this light line that the t prime axis does, but just on the other side. So it looks like this. So here's our x prime axis. Okay, well, the last thing I want to show is we talked about simultaneity the other day, right? Okay, so if we want to go back in time before the synchronization point, we can do that. All we have to do is extend these lines. So this is the extension of the x prime axis, okay? And I want to draw two scenarios here. The first one is the one we're familiar with, where we have an event A and an event B, right? I'll make their light lines. I'm going to make their light lines in a different color. And I'm going to assume that this is equal distance from the origin. These two events are simultaneous in the platform frame. How do we know that? Well, because event A happened at t equals zero, and event B happened at t equals zero. An observer located halfway in between those two points in space sees the signals from both of them arrive at the same time, as shown here, yes? Yes. What about an event, what about events that are simultaneous in the moving frame. Since you can see that eventually this light line here will, I'm going to make it bend in a little bit, will make its way to the T, oh, oh sorry, that's, again, I'm mistaking the lines that I'm shooting towards. Here we go. So this is where the moving observer sees this event A. This is the point in time where the moving observer sees the event B. He saw B before he saw A, okay? Whereas the platform observer at the origin both of these observers are at the origins of their respective coordinate systems. But the platform observer saw these events arrive at the same time. The train observer at the origin of the train, right, saw B arrive first here, and then A arrives. Okay? Alright. What about events that will be, where, how do I draw events that are simultaneous to the train frame? Well, I need to draw them along a line of simultaneity, right? For the platform frame, the lines of simultaneity are always horizontal lines. Any horizontal line I draw will be a place where the time is always the same, right? Yeah. If I draw a horizontal line across here, this is, you know, t equals 10 or something. How do I do that with these, these, other, these other coordinates? Well, let me just take t prime. Uh, recall that x prime, the x prime axis, is the place where t prime is equal to zero. And so, if I want to draw events that are simultaneous in the trace frame, I need to pick a point, and I want it to arrive at the origin at the same time. So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to pick, take a distance from the origin. I'm going to call this point A prime. Okay. That's on the X prime axis. That's the, that's the axis where T prime is equal to zero. And then I'm going to draw another line, equal distance, along here. But remember, this is a di this distances along here are measuring distances of X prime. I'm going to put this event called B prime, put it right there. So now I'll draw my light lines. I have a 45 degree angle. And then I'll draw a 40, okay, top, 45 degree angle. There, they arrive at the same point. 40 degree, 45 degree angle, it's parallel to this, right? And this will, of course, be perpendicular to it. So 
there is an event, and so this is a visual representation, right, of showing you why it is that events simultaneous in one reference frame are not simultaneous in a frame moving in relative motion to it. Alright. That's literally what that means. So events that are simultaneous in the moving frame will appear on diagonal lines that are parallel to this x prime axis anywhere along here. Okay? Right. Any event on those lines will occur at the same time in the frame of the train. Whereas in the frame of the platform, there are always horizontal lines. That'll take some thinking about to, uh, to get used to it. I know it's, it's tricky, but uh, hopefully it's not too tricky. All right. and that's all I'm going to say about that. Again, I think I'll leave the algebraic demonstration or how you get the, the, the moving coordinate axes uh, as an exercise. It's going to be a homework assignment. Okay. Um, and so we're going to move on. I haven't figured out to what yet, but uh, probably go straight to deriving the Lorentz transformations, which is not too tough. Just a little bit of algebra. Um, should be a Hopefully a short lecture. Yeah, so I think that's all I'm going to say about this.